Deacon Ken and I go back to the fourth grade at St. Hyacinth School. Uh, Deacon Ken and I and our families go back over 100 years uh, in our old neighborhood, the St. Hyacinth School area, also known as Yaskovo. Uh, Deacon Ken and I went all the way through grade school together, graduated here at Benedictine in 1966. We were in each other's bridal parties, and Deacon Ken also performed my wedding uh, back at St. John Newman some almost 40 years ago. I met Deacon Ken Pachowski uh, in 2002. He was the director of the formation program for the diaconate community of the Diocese of Cleveland. And at that time, I was applying to possibly become a deacon for the Diocese of Cleveland, and I had to go through an interview process with him. I didn't know what to expect when I first met him, and he's an individual that he, ex he expresses himself in a way that is very Christ-like. He has great leadership qualities, and at the same time, he allows uh, the person that he's interviewing, myself at the time, uh, for our qualities to come through as well. I came back after ordination to my first year at Benedictine High School, and, uh, and Ken Pachowski is one of the students. And, and my, my second year I was there, I was made Dean of Men, as assistant principal, and then I got, he was a senior that year. So I, I got to know him pretty good during that, during that year. And we, we started playing on a Saturday golf outing that we, we had a group of guys that would go because his parish was St. Hyacinth, 1981. When I became abbot, he was also ordained uh, deacon. That was his, that was his first, first year of assignment was to St. Hyacinth as a, as a deacon. As an abbot, I would go down there and help out with mass every Saturday night and every Sunday morning. And so I got to, I got to know Kenny pretty well. But when his pastor died, he was made administrator of the parish. He led that parish in a wonderful way because, you know, they didn't know what was the future of the parish, but they knew that uh, with Ken there, they knew it was in good hands because he was great. I, I was pastor at St. John Newman from 1990 to 2018 when I retired. Actually, my association with Ken goes back a lot earlier, even into the 1960s which is probably uh, the time for some of you, Moses crossed the Red Sea. But uh, Ken and I both share a Polish ethnicity. And while we didn't know each other back then, we were able to, uh, I'm sure, as we discussed a lot of times, both be at the uh, Polish Women's Hall on Sunday evenings on Broadway. And there we would go and listen to Polish polkas, mostly by a band called Ray Bujelik. But I got to know Ken, uh, as a deacon, he, uh, when he was ordained a deacon, and uh, I knew him as a deacon, but then I really got to know him when he came to minister at St. John Newman. We not only ministered together, but we developed a real good friendship that I'm very glad to have uh, Ken as a friend, and certainly want to congratulate you, Ken, on this honor you're receiving tonight. He was one of the people that I knew that uh, was there for me, that he was going to be a sounding board, always there to uh, give his sage advice on the, the ins and outs, the workings of St. John Newman, and but always open to the ideas that I presented. There were a number of liturgical changes that had to be made, and, and Deacon Ken has a wonderful love of the Holy Liturgy, uh, a love of church, and uh, he was a real source of wisdom for me and, and comfort and guidance. I think Deacon Ken uh, is a very good homilist. I think that he really is able to bring the readings to life in just a very down-to-earth, matter-of-fact way. So I think he sometimes challenges us as parishioners to think about things differently or more deeply. Uh, but I think the other side of him that unfortunately many people don't get to see, but I have as a colleague as well as some parishioners, uh, is that he is an incredible spiritual director. Uh, he is a man with profound wisdom, with an incredible depth, an amount of compassion. He is someone who is obviously very knowledgeable of the faith. You would expect that in a deacon. But he has a way of just being able to be who you need him to be, and he's able to meet you where you're at. I always remember him always making himself available to help 
to, to be there for, for the Marymount sisters who taught us, to be here for the Benedictine monks who taught us at the high school, uh, to be there when we were together at John Carroll, uh, to always step forward. Deacon Ken had a call for service uh, as long as I can remember. He was ordained before the age of 35, which was unheard of. He had to petition Rome in order to be ordained before the age of 35, which he was. And then he, uh, was, he served at a number of parishes, but at the same time, he also served and was called to ministry to uh, be the director of the diaconate community, to be a director of the formation community. And at that time, he was, his guidance was something that was vitally important for us. He, uh, he served in a way that I kind of equate to uh, a man that lived back in the sixth century by the name of Benedict. He was called to serve men. He was called to lead men. He was called to guide men in ways. And I kind of equate the two of them together. And I think that St. John Newman is so faith-filled. And I think that when you, for example, listen to Deacon Ken preaching a homily or just when you talk to him, you know that he is full of faith, he is faith-filled. And, and I think it's kind of funny that whenever I have gone into his office to talk to him, whether it's a good moment or maybe I'm angry at something or maybe I'm really struggling with something, he has a prayer. He pulls out of his little book and he gives me a prayer. And like, who, who does that? And who has all these different prayers that are able to help you in whatever situation you're encountering at the time. To say about Ken is he is certainly a man of faith. Uh, the way he participates and celebrates liturgy as a deacon, uh, the way he comes across to others and reaches out, uh, often supporting them in difficult times. I know I have a funeral coming up in a few days, and when he found out who it was, he said, can I deacon for the uh, funeral? And I certainly, by all means. What I think Deacon Ken in particular does well is uh, you, you have to still be yourself. You have to be comfortable uh, in your own skin. That makes you approachable to people. They need to know uh, that you're real, that, that you are a sinner just like them and you're yearning for redemption just like them. And, uh, we're not perfect, uh, rather it be priest or, or deacon. We are comfortable in our own skin. We are comfortable in our, our fallen, fragile humanity. And that's one thing that uh, uh, Deacon Ken is very good at. He is not afraid to uh, crack a joke at his own expense or uh, find humor. Uh, he, he loves Cleveland sports. He's a long-suffering Cleveland sports fan like myself and many people. So you can talk Guardians with him. You can talk Cavaliers. You can talk the Browns with Deegan. He is a confidant. He is a man of strength and integrity and wisdom. Uh, and he's my friend. He's one of my dearest friends. He went through some hard times when his wife had a stroke and not only did he have these obligations but he also cared for her because you know when a person has a stroke they need a lot of attention and he gave that to his wife. He gave that to his wife as a wonderful husband and a wonderful father. Deacon Ken and Linda had a, a special love for each other that I just can't put into words. God is calling us to many things as he called him. As he called him to, to be a husband and a father, to be a, a deacon, to be a you know a leader, a leader in the church. And so, uh, Ken, my congratulations and the congratulations of all those who have known you, have worked with you, have played golf with you, <laughs> all those all those who have known you and your wife and your family, we just can't honor you anymore and say you truly are a man of Benedictine. God bless you, God's peace, and thank you for your ministry. Uh, thanking, thank you for making me look good uh, at St. John Newman and uh, continue to find work you're doing in the Lord's vineyard. Congratulations, Deacon Ken. I know that I speak for a lot of people when we say that we are so proud of you and we just are so grateful to have you a part of our parish. So all congratulations to you. On behalf of my wife, Joan, and myself, I want to congratulate Ken Pachowski on being inducted into the Benedictine Hall of Distinction. It is a wonderful opportunity to honor a man who has contributed his entire life to 
the service of the church, to service of God's will on this earth. And I want to thank him for his influence upon my life and uh, the people that I know that he's, his life has touched as well. Congratulations, Ken. I'm so very proud uh, of you and all you have accomplished. And it has been my honor to uh, have an opportunity to journey with you over these past five years uh, of my priesthood. Uh, you have been a, a wonderful, wonderful companion along that journey. Deacon Ken, on behalf of all of us from the city of Strongsville, I uh, want to congratulate you uh, on your entrance into the Hall of Distinction here at Benedictine. Uh, you deserve it. You've worked hard. Your commitment to your faith, your commitment to your church, your commitment to your family and your community speaks volumes. God bless.